you already know that Google's the number one search engine on the internet. Everybody knows that. But one thing that most people don't know is that the second place is YouTube. YouTube comes in second with five billion per day. And for that reason alone, I think that YouTube is definitely worthwhile and worth us spending a little bit of our effort on. So let's take a look at some of the opportunities first. So my plan for you today is I'm going to convince you that you should be on YouTube, give you all the possibilities, give you some ideas on how to do it, show you how, what you need to have to do it, and give you a quick overview of the steps to get onto YouTube. And, you know, I was kind of thinking to myself earlier, I was thinking, you know, what could I do for my people? So here's what I'm doing. If you'll type your name and your email address in the chat sometime between now and the end, I will email you all the slides and all my notes on this. So you don't have to write down anything. It'll be all there for you. So just put that in, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Thanks, Chuck. All right, so I already mentioned that there's 5 billion views per day. So we don't really need to get a lot of that in order for it to affect our business. And over this thing, I'm going to emphasize that numbers are not the important part, but we do need to know about them. Now, YouTube is up 60% year over year, and that's for two years in a row. So the growth is staggering on YouTube. It's eclipsed everything else on the internet. 86% of house hunters watch videos. Now that's according to NAR. I think that number's a lot higher now, but that's what it says on the website. Another one from NAR, 70% of home buyers watch home video tours. Again, I think that's gone a lot higher because I think these statistics were pre-COVID. Way more than half watch a video to learn about buying and selling process because even though these things are common knowledge to us, they're not common knowledge to the general public. So they, they, know, they just don't know a lot of stuff that we take for granted. So it's important that we educate them. And this is a good way to do it. Only 30% watch video testimonials. And only 25% watch about us and agent profile videos. So are you seeing a pattern here? The things that are about us are of very little importance to the people out there. They care about learning about the process. They want to learn about properties. They want to learn about things that are beneficial to them and not things that are beneficial to us. By the time they get to our YouTube channel, they already know who we are. They already have some level of trust. So having a whole bunch of testimonials on there, having a whole bunch of about me videos are of little use. Now here's the kicker. I couldn't find any real estate specific statistics on this, but I think it's probably reflective of our business too. Only 9% of small businesses use YouTube. So if you ask me, that's a colossal opportunity for us because so few people, and you think about all the realtors that we know, how many of them are actually doing videos? I mean, I can't think of hardly anybody. So this is a great opportunity for us. So here's the takeaways from these little facts. We all know that people do business with who they know, like, and trust. Nothing other than being face-to-face -face gives a person an idea of who you are and what you're like than video. So it's definitely something that helps move us along the way to people trusting us. People want to see home tours and learn about the process. So guess what kind of videos I'm going to recommend that we all do? It's going to be about the home. It's going to be about the process of buying a home. These are the things people want to see. And 91% of our competitors are not doing any of this. So if you ask me, that's excellent news because we can get in on this thing early. We can get a foothold. We can lay a solid foundation and really get a major head start on everybody else that's out there. 
Everybody's scrambling, trying to figure this stuff out right now. And we've got a serious advantage. Now, people always ask me like, okay, well, I'm doing really good with Facebook and maybe Instagram. What, you know, why do I need to add YouTube into this mix? And you have to think long-term on this. Now, if you're not going to be in this business next year, you might as well log off right now because none of this is worth it if you're like thinking short term. But if you're going to be in this business after next year, start building the equity in YouTube now. Now, first of all, it establishes you as an expert. Now, believe it or not, even though anybody can put something on YouTube, the public perceives YouTube people as experts. And that's a really great thing because most of the folks that are on YouTube they're not experts, but they're considered that just because they're there. So you might be thinking, oh, well, you know, maybe I'm not qualified to, you know, give all this educational material to the general public. Yes, you are, because you only have to know slightly more than them. And that makes you an expert. So don't shy away from this. Also, people are constantly asking you, questions, need information. Some of the things are difficult to explain or take a long time to explain. So maybe instead of typing a long email every time somebody asks you what a four-point inspection is, wouldn't it be awesome if you could just send them a link to a YouTube video that explains the whole thing? It makes you look super organized, it makes you more efficient, and it also directs them to a bunch of other videos that you may have made so that they can enjoy those too. And it really reinforces you as being an expert and somebody that's really put an effort into your business and you're not just some dude selling real estate. Now, eventually this will grow into a source for prospects. I'll prove this to you later. But one thing I want you to understand is that if you start putting YouTube videos on today, you're not going to start getting leads. It just doesn't work that way. It takes time to build up. But I think that the advantages of having a single centralized repository for all your video information and a place to send people to after they are prospects, that alone makes it worthwhile. Uh, Pat and I have not really put a major effort into building our numbers for that reason. We're using it for the reasons I just mentioned. Now I know what you're thinking. But Chuck, I'm shy. I don't look good on video. I don't know what to say. How can I come up with something every week to post? Oh, it's going to be too hard. I'm scared. Well, you don't have to be slick. Almost everybody that I've spoke to about this has exactly the same comment. They say, I don't look good on video. I hate seeing myself. I hate hearing my own voice. Those are all perfectly normal human emotions. Nobody likes seeing themselves. Nobody likes hearing themselves. But you got to get over it. That's just your pride talking. So we need to get past that. Now consider this. We all know each other. We're used to seeing each other the way we look on a day-to-day -day basis. We're used to hearing each other whatever way we talk on a day-to-day -day basis, mistakes and all. So when people see you on a video, if it's too slick and too polished, it's not believable because it's not genuine. It's, it comes off as scripted. And I don't know how you guys feel about scripts, but if someone can tell you're reading a script, they just click and tune you out they're not going to believe what you say, and they're not going to find it interesting either, unless it's something they specifically want to know right that minute. So instead, show up the way you are, sound the way you are, and it will come across as being genuine because of the mistakes. So don't go through and edit it 10 times or do it over and over and over and over again. Perfection is the enemy here, because what's going to happen is you're going to strive for perfection. And you may wonder how I know this, because I come from an advertising background and I want everything to be perfect, but you'll find yourself doing nothing and getting zero benefit. So let's say you get a little bit of benefit 
out of a pretty lame video. That's still better than the nothing that you're going to get if you hold back and don't put something on there. Everybody sucks. Everybody. All the people we admire, they sucked at the beginning. But you know how they got better? Is they made videos. They put them on there. They, you just have to do it. You have to act. You know, there's so many people out there. They, there's other people doing what we want to do and having what we want to have just because they showed up. So we've got to do it. It doesn't matter. It really doesn't. People don't care what you look like or what you sound like. As long as you can get your point across semi-intelligible, you're fine. And if you've looked at YouTube, I can prove to you that most of the stuff on there is not really that good. So you're not going to be the worst one. At worst, you're going to be average. And that's ahead of 91% of the other people who aren't doing anything with this. So I hope this makes sense to you. I don't wanna go on and on and beat a dead horse, but this is so important. I, I want you guys to get the benefit out of this. And the only way to do it is put your pride aside and just do it. You have to act. All right, back to, I'll quit preaching now and we'll go back to the little slideshow. You are who you are, wherever you are. So just be yourself. You are good enough, you're fine. All right, I wanted to introduce you to three people. Um, these are three people that I happen to know. Uh, this guy is George Packard. George Packard has a lawn service. He has 22,400 subscribers on YouTube. His videos are about how to keep your lawn service in business and how to you know, be a little more efficient and earn better money. So you got a lawn service dude who does videos for other lawn service people and 22,400 subscribers. Now, he didn't get there overnight. He started seven years ago. Now, this has really helped his business. It's helped him to actually expand into some other businesses later. Now, I think if you go to George Packard's YouTube channel, and I'll, I'm going to give you a list at the end of all this when I email it over to you, it's nothing special. He just sits his butt down in front of a camera and, and talks about what he has on his mind. All right, this is my friend Abdul Mohammed. Now, Abdul is an interesting character because he started going on YouTube just as a hobby. Just, you know, kind of, he owned a hot dog cart. That's what, that's what he did for a living at this point when he first started 11 years ago. And um, he's grown his channel up to a 17,100 subscribers. Now, again, the numbers aren't important, but what is important is that Abdul's been on a TV show because some producers saw his videos and thought, hey, this guy would fit in perfectly with what, what this show's all about. And he's been on TV, man. So it was just because of YouTube, just, just a lucky break, a dude with a hot dog cart. Now, later, He's expanded his business, and he's a social media expert now. I wish my dog would quit scratching stuff. Hang on a second. Lucky, stop that. Okay, I'm back. So he's expanding his business, and um, I've given you a, a link to his channel on the thing that I'm going to email you. Since I last spoke with him, he had a, a tragic accident, and he's not doing videos presently. He... Um, has a speech impediment because of an accident. And until he recovers from that, he's kind of taken a break from doing videos. But he's another case where, you know, he's not anybody who had any special training. He just wanted to do it and he had something to say. Here's another friend of mine, uh, Veronica Olson. Veronica's from Ukraine and she sells furs for a living. Uh, she's an entrepreneur. Well, she kind of had a special thing in her heart for helping couples who, where one person's from Ukraine and the other person's from the U.S. to kind of overcome the cultural differences. So she started doing some videos about that. Well, here we are four years later. Veronica's got 8,700 subscribers. She doesn't sell furs anymore. She's an international relationship expert and earning a ton of money helping people 
with the relationships between uh, these two cultures. So she's just somebody who had something to say and it grew and it grew into a whole business. So you're probably thinking, oh, okay, well, that's fine and dandy for them because they have something to say. What about me? I don't have anything to say. What am I going to talk about? These are the exact things I said to Michael Bindman when he first started talking to me about doing videos way, way, way back. I was like, you know, I don't, I don't really know that much. I, what am I going to talk about it? You know, well, here's the thing. We assume that what we know is common knowledge and it isn't. People are interested in real estate. People are, if nothing else, people are interested in what it's like to be a realtor. Everybody wants to be a realtor. Now I know most of them are, but <laughs> people are interested in what we do for a living. So I've got some ideas for you. Now I recommend that you post at least once a week and consistency is the key. This is one area where I have not been as good as I should be. So my commitment is every Wednesday, a new video. So you're thinking, oh my God, I'm going to run out of ideas really quick. Well, no, you won't. So just think about what people always ask you. How's the market? Well, there's a video. Uh, new listings that come up. Maybe if you're running out of ideas, feature a local business that you like. Interview somebody. Uh, give your opinion of the market and answers to every question you've ever been asked. You know, what's a four point inspection? You know, how do I know if my panel is going to pass? Uh, there's a billion of them. Start making videos about them and then do some behind the scenes stuff. Now, I want you to understand one thing. Subscribers and views don't matter as much as you think they do because most of the time you're not using this to draw people in at first. That'll happen naturally over time. But when you start off, don't be discouraged about subscribers and views. Most of the time, we're going to be sending people there ourselves. And we'll talk about that in more detail in a minute. Comparing ourselves among ourselves is not wise. So don't be looking at some other realtor's thing and seeing, oh my God, you know, they've got a billion views and I don't have any, or they've got all this stuff going on and I don't have anything. It doesn't matter. That's their business. Don't worry about other people's business. Worry about your business. Don't compare yourself with other people. The only possible thing that comes out of that is discouragement. Now, here's what you need. You've already got the expensive part. All you need is a phone. Any phone that any of you have is perfectly sufficient for doing YouTube videos that are very high quality. Now, the other thing I recommend is something to stabilize your phone. So you got nice stable video. I recommend DJI Osmo 4. It just came out recently. It's only $149. It's cheap. It works wonderfully. And it makes a huge difference in the quality of your video because it's nice and stable and not all jittery. If you want to go the next step, the next thing would be to improve the sound quality. Now you can get the kind that plugs into your phone, but I found that my latest phone doesn't have a plug in. So there's a, a wireless kind as well. So they range anywhere from $19 to the plug in type to 139 for the one that I ended up buying. And I'll give you links to all these at the end. The other thing that's very useful to have is a tripod with a phone mount. It's very fatiguing to the viewer if the video is not stable. It, it just, it messes with their eyes and it's very difficult to watch. So you'll find if your video is not really stable, people don't watch much of it. All right, so uh, let's talk a little bit about the mechanics of YouTube. Now, one thing that I didn't really intend for this to be a software training, but there are a few things that you need to know to make it easy for you to get started on YouTube because like most things that are made by Google, the user interface is not obvious how it works. So let me show you the things that I think are real important. And then you can fill in the gaps either by asking me later, or you'll never guess there are YouTube videos about YouTube. All right. So first of all, here's, here's a quick, quick 
clip of our channel. We named ours Florida Real Estate Scene. And it's called a channel. That's what YouTube calls your page. And we've got a bunch of videos on there. I'll explain how all this works right now. now you have to have an account with Google in order to have YouTube. So if you don't have a Gmail, you're gonna to need to have one in order to have YouTube. So you just sign up, it's perfectly free. And when you go to YouTube in the upper right hand corner, you see the little tiny icon right up there, a circular one, I've got an arrow pointing to it. It's so tiny, you'd never think to click on it. Well, that's where you have to click. So if you click on it, you'll, you'll see your account. And you can even have multiple accounts too. Like for example, we have one for our real estate. And then we have, in my case, I have one for my personal stuff. So you click on that. And if you're going to upload a video or record one right away, in the upper right hand corner, there's a little button that says create. And that's where you go to either upload or to actually record your video. Now, once you've done this, you're in what's called the YouTube studio at this point. And on the left-hand side, there's a whole bunch of little icons here. Now we're not gonna go through all of them. We're just gonna go through the ones that are important when you're starting off. But this dashboard thing that you're presented with, it's got some information that they think might be helpful to you. It has analytics, which we'll talk about in a moment. Now in the list of videos, there's a little pencil icon, and that's the one that's very important to us. The little pencil icon takes us to where we can make edits. The title of your video and the description are vitally important. Now, there's a million, if you ask 10 people, you'll get 10, many, 10 different opinions on what's the best way to do it. Personally, I focus on having the title be either a question or have a number in it, like, you know, four things that'll make your house uninsurable. So numbers or questions are the way that we usually go. The description, well, that's kind of self-explanatory, but take the time to write something that's descriptive of the video. And if that description squares up with your tags, that's going to make it easy to find. Because keep in mind, YouTube is a search engine at its core. It's a search engine that serves up videos only instead of websites. So you have to make it so things work. And if you read anything about how to trick it to put your thing to the top, don't do it. YouTube is wise to those tricks and they will penalize you by either putting you to the very back of the line or in an extreme case, if you keep doing it, they'll delete your whole account and not let you back. So the description and the tag you have to be honest with it. People don't want to get a video that's not about what they're looking for. Down towards the bottom, you'll see a whole bunch of tags. And again, these tags should be representative of what's in the video. Now, the thumbnail, that's the little tiny view of your video that shows up on the screen when people are searching. It can be chosen from a frame in the video or you can actually upload your own. The red circle over on the left, that's where you can change the little thumbnail into something you want. And then as you start to accumulate some videos, I recommend that you start making what they're called playlists. So that might be what you'd call categories. One of them is about property that's for sale. One, is, one of them is about real estate opinion. One is tips and tutorials. And then one is about educational videos. So you can kind of divide these down into categories, which will help users to find the right video while they're looking. Now, this is one of the thumbnails that I made. Don't steal images off the internet. It's stealing. It's not legal. A lot of people believe that if something is on the internet, that it's free to use. It's not true. Those images belong to somebody and we should not steal them. It's easy to get your own images. 
you can either find a free royalty free websites that have images but if you really want to be a professional and you really want your stuff to look great and i know you do i recommend adobe stock it's stock.adobe.com you can either buy the images one at a time they're really cheap they're just a couple bucks or for 29.99 a month you can have 10 images a month and they accumulate so i think I was on there last night. I've got 177 images in the bank that I can download. And that way you've got good, real high-end professional images that kind of reflect on your professionalism as well. Now, as far as how you make these thumbnails, you're going to have to have some kind of graphics program to do them. The best one is Photoshop. Now, Photoshop costs $9.95 a month and you can get it from adobe.com and there's also a mobile version of it for your phone or for your tablet now the problem with photoshop is the learning curve is kind of steep now i can recommend a really good photoshop course to you but what most people use if you don't already know how to use photoshop is a thing called canva and it's free it's on the internet it does really nice looking graphics I would say, unless you're really into photography, go with Canva. And then they've got a pro version that starts at $9.95 a month that gives you a whole bunch of other features that you may be interested in. And just so you know, YouTube thumbnails are 1,280 by 720 pixels. And again, I'll be emailing all this to you so you don't even have to write it down. All right, let's get back to our YouTube. So you can see here in the thumbnail, I got my thumbnail put in there. Over in the right, got some playlists tagged for this. I've got some tags in here. Let's keep moving. Again, the playlists. Uh, I've got, last time I checked, about 150 videos so far and it makes it easy to break them down into categories like this. Now here's the part that stresses everybody out, the analytics section. Don't even go look at it at first. It, it'll just bum you out because be like, oh man, I only got three views on that. It doesn't matter, that's three people that you didn't have otherwise. I mean, how hard is it to go out in the street and find three people and meet them and get them to listen to you for a few minutes? So don't worry about this, but I'll tell you what you want to do after you start getting a few videos on there, keep an eye on the analytics and see which ones are performing better. So if you happen to see that certain topics are more interesting to people, start doing more of those. And the ones that don't perform well at all, well, quit doing stuff like that. And that way you can continue improving over time. Now, when it comes to editing, YouTube's got its own video editor, and it's, it's pretty rudimentary, but you can get some basic stuff done here, and it's suitable for most folks. If you want to go the next step, you can use a video editing program. Like if you have a Macintosh, it comes with iMovie. It's very, very easy to use. There's YouTube videos that will teach you how to use it, and you can really do some professional-looking video just on your Mac. And on Windows, it comes with video editors for free, too, that are easy to use. There are a lot of choices on that. And so whichever brand of computer you prefer, you know, ask some folks and, and see what they prefer. Now, we talked a little bit about efficiency. You'll notice that as you're working through this, you can actually set up defaults for things. It's like, for example, in this window here, every video, when I upload it, it's already got the little you know, Chuck and Pat are realtors and they're great little tags at the end. So I don't have to type that every time. All right, same way with tags. You can automate that to some degree. Now, the one thing that I haven't done yet, and I think it's important, is to look into doing subtitles. Research has shown that if you have subtitles so that people can see your video and read what it says with the, vol the volume turned down, that that's really beneficial. So we're going to start doing that. I'll tell you how it goes when we start doing it. But I, I do know that that's important and we're going to start. We should talk about Facebook for a moment because you want to leverage your content. So all this content 
that you're uploading to YouTube, also upload it to Facebook. Now, when I say upload it to Facebook, I don't mean put a link to YouTube because what I've got here, you'll see it's got a link to YouTube. Facebook is not going to be showing this to hardly anybody if it shows it to anybody at all, because Facebook does not like to send you to a competitor's website. So they want everything to be on Facebook. It's got to be part of their whole infrastructure. So take the little extra step, upload it separately to YouTube, and then separately to Facebook, and separately to whatever other social media platforms you might like to use. You can get a lot of mileage out of your content, but just doing links, it's a false economy because you'll get penalized for it. I've got a whole bunch of my favorites here. Now, as you look through these, because I'd encourage you to do so, there's a real mixture. Some of them are super great, like Pat and mine. Oh, awesome. The second one down, Jessica Edwards, that's the one that actually kind of inspired me to get started on this. And then there's many others. They kind of run the gamut from really great to kind of lame, but they're all in there for a reason, So because there's something to learn from them. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching.